All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, monkeys, bananas, ladders, and culture. Uh, and as usual, everything that I'm, I'm going to be reading and plus some uh, other material is going to be in the thread. So if you want to click through and read all that, feel free to do so. So anyways, we begin with a little story. It's mostly illustrated. So a group of scientists place five monkeys in a cage and in the middle, a ladder with bananas on the top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey went up the ladder, the others beat up the one on the ladder. After some time, no monkey dared go up the ladder regardless of the temptation. Scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys. The first go up the ladder. Immediately, the other monkeys beat him up. After several beatings, the new member learned not to climb the ladder, even though he never knew why. A second monkey was substituted, and the same occurred. The first monkey participated in the beating for the second monkey. A third monkey was changed, and the same, uh, same uh, was repeated. The fourth was substituted, and the beating was repeated. And finally, the fifth monkey was replaced. What was left was a group of five monkeys that, even though never received a cold shower, continued to beat any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder. If it was possible to ask the monkeys why they would beat up all those who attempted to go up the ladder, I bet you the answer would be, I don't know, that's how things are done around here. Does it sound familiar? So anyways, the point now, if you click through the link, you'll see that uh, there's some doubts as to the veracity, whether any such, uh, such studies were conducted. But even as a metaphor, I think this works very well for culture. And here at Grero, we are big on culture. Uh, this is about social conformity and mindless social conformity. People don't even know why they're conforming to things anymore. People don't know why they lash out at uh, same-sex uh, same-sex relationships. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, they themselves have it, so it comes to the surface that way, kind of bubbles up to the surface. But the other reason is, you know, they've been told since a young age that this is horrible, this is evil, and they can't recall it and say, wait a second, I was told this was horrible, but eh, I guess it's not. They just can't face it for whatever reason. Maybe they don't want to admit that their, you know, teachers, priests, and parents were horrible people who told them evil things. Uh, but anyway, so that's culture. Now, there's more monkey business uh, because there's another study that I found, another, t or another essay on monkeys that I found. Um, basically, there's a guy who's, who's uh, been studying baboons, and he, he talks about two studies, and then he talks about his own. So let me read these. Two classic studies have shown that primates are somewhat independent from their natures. So, you know, the nature versus nurture debate of, oh, is it the genes or is it the environment? And so anyways, continue. In the early 1970s, a highly respected, highly respected primatologist named Hans Kummer was working in a region of Ethiopia containing two species of baboons with markedly different social systems. Savannah baboons live in large troops with plenty of adult females and males. Hamadryas baboons, in contrast, have a more complex and quite different multi-level society. When confronted with a threatening male, the females of the two species react differently. A Hamadryas baboon placates the male by approaching him, whereas a savanna baboon can only run away if she wants to avoid injury. Coomer conducted a simple experiment, trapping an adult female savanna baboon and releasing her into the Hamadryas troop, and trapping an adult female Hamadryas and releasing her into a savanna troop. The females, who were dropped in among a different species, initially carried out their species-typical behavior, a major faux pas in the new neighborhood. It's like, well, never mind, that was a bad joke. But gradually, they absorbed the new rules. How long did this learning take? About an hour. In other words, millennia of genetic differences separating two species, a lifetime of experience with a crucial social role for each female, and a minuscule amount of time to reverse course completely. So, you know, the point is you have peaceful baboons, you have the more aggressive baboons, but ultimately it's just culture, a baboon culture. 
you know, that even with a different species, even with all that experience, even with a lifetime of learning, people adapt to their immediate environments. So the whole point is it's not really about nature, it's about the flexibility of nurture, that, uh, or rather the flexibility of people adapting to their environments. So anyways, the second experiment was set up by Franz de Waal of Emory University and his stu student Denise Yohanovitz in the early 1990s, working with two macaque uh, monkey species. By any human standards, male rhesus uh, macaques are unappealing animals. Their hierarchies are rigid. Those at the top sees a disproportionate spare of the, uh, share of the spoils. They enforce this in uh, iniquity with ferocious aggression, and they rarely reconcile their fights. In contrast, uh, male stump tail macaques, uh, which share almost all of their genes with the, with the, re with the rhesus cousins, display much less aggression, looser hierarchies, more egalitarianism, and more behaviors that promote group cohesion. So yet again, we have a peaceful group, we have a more aggressive group. Working with the captive primates, DeWall and Yohanovitz created a mixed-sex social group of juvenile macaques combining rhesus and stump tails together. Remarkably, instead of the rhesus macaques bullying the stump tails, over the course of a few months, the rhesus males adopted the stumptail social lifestyle, eventually matching the stumptail's high rates of recon reconciliatory behavior. It so happens, moreover, that stumptails and rhesus macaques use different gestures when reconciling. The rhesus macaques in the study did not start using the stumptail's reconciliatory gestures but rather increase the incidence of their own species-typical gestures. In other words, they are not merely imitating the stumptail's behavior, they are incorporating the concept of frequent reconciliation into their own social practices. Finally, when the new, newly warm and fuzzy rhesus macaques were returned to a larger all-rhesus group, their new behavioral style persisted. So, uh, yet again, the point is that there's a lot of flexibility within culture. So even when we have a species that looks like this is their nature, their nature can be apparently turned on a dime very quickly. And, you know, that just relates to Guerrero. The main claim is most men have a bisexual potential that's repressed by a homophobic society. I mean, if you have a different species that you know, is aggressive versus peaceful. And, and you know, I think the difference between being aggressive and peaceful is much different than, than, you know, having sex with women and having sex with men. Because at the end of the day, you know, sex is sex. Um, it still is sex. It still is good. It still is wonderful. But peace and war is a little different. So different species, and they bridge the gap between peace and war a lot quicker. So, again, this is just, without rambling too much, this at least provides an analogy or a metaphor that such seemingly large changes are very possible. Now, I just wanted to mention one last thing. Uh, I guess if you want to read through it, you can uh, read the whole thing. Uh, but basically, the guy who wrote this essay, Sapolsky, or whatever, he himself conducted research, and he found, that, found out that there were some baboons that were eating garbage. And when the and basically the males, the alpha males were very very aggressive. They won't let the uh, younger ones eat too much. Uh, they beat the slap the females around. And they found out when when the older ones died off quickly from I think pneumonia or some kind of a tubercular or something. The the older the alpha males died off, and basically the baboons that survived were a lot more peaceful. Okay. And then even when the peaceful baboons survived, that, sur that, sur uh, that trait survived in the whole troop, okay? So, yet again, the point is, culture is, um, e even, in, even in things like peace and war, uh, you can have quite a bit of culture that's responsible for all this. So this idea that, oh, you know, the straight people are born that way because so are gays, eh, no. Monkeys show that's not the case uh, with something that is a lot more uh, divergent than, than sex. Anyway, so, uh, well, I guess that's it. Thank you for listening.